you know, raid, that type of thing, I would say, no, don't give it to us. If it's something that you actually are using, for example, on your skin, then you could give it to us. That I, that's kind of what I use mm -hmm. as a rule of thumb. That makes sense. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, for these aluminum foil pans and aluminum foil, um, do they? How clean do they have to be for you yeah. to take them? Well, again, I mean, we do rely on people's, you know, judgment. Um, Are you telling us you don't put them in the dishwasher? Right? Dish what I'm dealing with is like, so something. we have a pan like that at, you know, at a certain point, they have been used. They have like, you know, sort of chicken stuff in, you know, whatever grease at the bottom of them, and I'm always like, how much do I need to wash this before I? Put if it's it grease. If it's grease, sort of like um, your Wesson cooking oil bottle type of greasy layer, you can give it to us. Again, in the recycling process, it will be scrubbed out. But if you, for example, if you, you know, you have leftover pizza and instead of storing the whole box in your refrigerator, you take the leftovers and you wrap it in foil. Well, sometimes when you open it, if, you know, you'll have like cheese and sort of the topping meshed into the Oil, if it's that type of thing, throw it out. Why is there a problem? I mean, at some point in the recycling for uh, metal, they're going to melt it down. All that stuff will burn off the floor to the top. I should think it's automatically going to be purified off. So why is it a problem? No, the food is a problem. The food is a problem. I mean, the, the oil, the liquids, those types of things will come off in the recycling process. But food, especially when it's sort of um, enmeshed, it is difficult for the markets to get that cleanly out. I, I think it, the final stage is going to be fine, but you've got a lot of things to do until then, and it's just not a market. If somebody can buy clean stuff, I'm going to buy it. We want to solve values. I don't know these questions that I have with a large plastic bottle with a lotion in it or a glass bottle with olive oil. Give it to us. Mm. And those don't have to be. It doesn't do much. It just kind of minimizes it. And again, that's mostly for the residents' convenience. It's not for the recycling process. And that will come out. And what about a plastic jar or something sticky? Mm -hmm. We'll take it. We'll take it. I mean, I, I personally, at the end, you know, I, I do stick it in the sink. And as I'm washing other things, right. the water goes in, the water goes out. And, I, you know, I'll sure. like. Pour it out and peel. Yeah, I mean you don't need to scrub it out. So you know when you have your urn on and you're not using the water, that hot water before instead of throwing it out before you refill it is good to wash those things because it's really boiling water as opposed to using it from the sink and wasting that water. That's a small metal hangers. The metal hangers and um, from the dry cleaners. At the, the best option that we have is reuse. So a lot of times... You drown them eventually. What's that? You drown them eventually. Yes, you do drown them. I mean, I would do it as you go. Don't you know, accumulate the them ones. so that you have like a whole um, closet full. But as you go to the dry cleaner, if you try to give them, ask them if they'll take them back for reuse, a lot of times they will. Did you I just saw somebody... As I was walking today, I saw somebody that had half a bin of mm -hmm. um, metal hangers, but he called them all and told them that they're not to be recycled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not to be mm -hmm. okay. so What that is that? Why is that? Why can't you recycle them? Mm -hmm. well, if you have a pickup of metal, why can't? What, what's, how is the hangar different? Yeah, you know, we've had this hangar. debate yeah. and this discussion internally many times, to be honest with you. At the curb, what we take are the large, kind of the larger scrap metal items. And when I say larger, refrigerators, washers, even microwave um, ovens. We have not... Electric motors? Electric motors? No. no. We don't take automotive type things. No, I like the pool, the pool pump. No, we don't take that type no, of thing. Okay. Um, we do take, though, drained out um, lawn motors. So it's kind of interesting, and we'll take dehumidifiers. Um, You're talking about curbside. 
curbside. Yeah. And it's also on the call basis. Is that stuff on your website? Is there a place you can look Yes, yes. You, website, you yeah. will keep the humidifiers? Yes. Do you, do you capture the CFCs? Yes, we do. We have a contractor to, um, he will capture the CFCs so that they're not okay. vented or released to the atmosphere okay. before recycling the scrap metal. We've not, we've, we've had this conversation a lot and debate a lot internally. Somehow, we're not able at this time to take smaller scale scrap metal items. You know, even if, even if people were to sort of save them up to a certain, you know, number of pounds or whatever, we just at this point are not able to do that. We can take them dropped off at our recycling center or transfer station site. Yeah, it's amazing how much stuff your transfer station takes. So, yeah. mm -hmm. We've so got you don't have any choice. There's nothing we can do except drop it off. At this point, for the smaller metal items, yes, that's right. But or they will get used. I mean, they but will get catalyzed. Yeah, they will definitely get recycled. Or you could bring them back to your dry cleaner. What? Yeah. Or you could bring them back to your dry cleaner. No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the, the pump. Pump motor. Yeah. A pump, a pump pump. Oh. I, I mean, we put it with one of our major trash collections, and they took it. We should, um, we should start moving faster, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was what I was mentioning before. The polystyrene is just really um, a problematic material. Please do not put things like light bulbs or um, panes of glass, window glass, mirrors. Don't give us those um, casserole dishes that you bake with or any ceramics. Any Plastic containers that have had pesticides or automotive fluids, please don't give us that for recycling. Mm. Um, now, plastic shopping bags, that comes up quite often. Here's the thing, what we would really ask folks to do is take one of your plastic shopping bags and if you have additional ones that you don't need, make a big soccer ball, put them all into the one plastic bag and then tie that up, make a big you know, ball, and the next time you go back to your local grocery store, yes. all of which in Montgomery County, with one exception, have containers or take back these plastic bags for recycling, do that. A lot of times people say, I mean, why won't you guys take these at the curb for recycling? Very good question, and here is why. What plastic bags, what happens to plastic bags that are recycled? For the most part, all the plastic bags get recycled, 50% plastic bags, 50% wood waste, and they come back to us as a lumber alternative. Some go under the um, trade name of Tress. There are other brands as well. Um, Winchester, Virginia is the home to Trex. They are the single biggest user across the country of plastic bags for recycling. Was it TREX? T-R-E-X. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. If we were to collect it at the curb, it would very much become contaminated, i.e. filthy, dirty, mm -hmm. because it would get the mayonnaise, the soda, the lotion, the cooking oil, all of that would end up on it. TREX cannot use that. They need clean material to break down and to mix with wood waste and to make this lumber alternative. By the way, if anyone's thinking of redoing a deck or doing any kind of um, fencing or railing, think about Trex because it's a great alternative um, or any lumber alternative in another you know, brand name. You don't have to worry about splintering. You don't have to go.